Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Knowing and Loving God presentation, Jesus and Mary summarize the different methods that can be used to understand God's loving laws and discuss how knowing and loving God and following God's principles leads us to automatically obey all of God's loving laws. Recorded on the 12th of November, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. We've chosen the subject of our last discussion with you for the group, this subject of knowing and loving God. Can you see that a person who wants to know somebody and wants to love somebody already forms a relationship with them? So if we don't have a relationship with God, it's because we either don't want to know God or we don't want to love God. Must, must be the reason for the lack of relationship. So this is the first thing we'd like to introduce to you, the concept that the automatic result of a relationship comes from knowing, wanting to know, and wanting to love. All right. And wanting to know and love God causes a strong desire inside of us to become as close as to God as possible. Whatever is possible is what we want. Isn't that the same in a normal relationship? Let's say you're in a partner relationship. Don't you want to be close with each other? And, and, and there's always, if, if the relationship is properly developed and continuously develops, and that's probably not the case for many on earth, but isn't it, isn't it that you want to just be closer and closer and closer and closer? Isn't that the underlying goal? Now, unfortunately on earth, because of a lot of addictions and everything, that process stops and you end up tolerating each other. But surely if you were really interested in a decent relationship, that would never develop. Because you just want to be closer and closer and closer and closer. And you're not tolerating each other's addictions. You're not going to be, um, you know, putting up with each other's addictions. You'll, you'll talk honestly and truthfully. But as a result, you'll get closer and closer and closer. Which is exactly what we want to do. And as a result of us getting closer to God, we automatically want to obey God's principles. And as we've learnt in the group, Obeying God's principles means we're automatically obeying billions and billions and billions of laws. Right? So can you see the obedience to God's laws is a much more simple proposition really than perhaps what we've been considering. Again, it's something that is driven by desire. Desire to want to know and love God. Now remember what you've learnt so far in the group. Remember we had this diagram where you had God's character, attributes and desires, the infinite being. You would cast your mind back to the very first morning. We've got this infinite being. Many of you learnt during that phase that, ah, oh, infinity, that's an interesting principle, right? It, it means a lot of things, right? Things that you haven't contemplated before. And the infinite being has character, attributes, desires, personality, has a nature, Right, and that personality, attributes and desires are imposed upon the principles that God has. Hence we get the next layer down, the principles of law. Can you see through our discussion now that we've started to firstly, when we examine the principles, and what were some of the, you yell out the principles, we had the first, first two were love, love truth, then we had life development, then we had economy function, then we had permanence and scope. They, were, they formed the basis of what we were calling the foundation principles. So these foundation principles, when you examine the foundation principles, you go, whoa, I'm starting to learn a lot now about God's personality and nature. What he believes love to be. Can you see that? God believes love to be these things. That's why he created these principles that form the foundation of law. So, 
So when we're out of harmony with these principles, we're demonstrating that we do not understand what love is. And isn't that really what we're demonstrating? Because that anything that's to do in harmony with one of God's principles is in harmony with love. We're also demonstrating that we don't understand the importance of truth. Because inside of these principles are truth built in, mathematical scientific certainty built into every one of them. We don't understand the importance of truth in the universe if we're out of harmony with those principles. So we had to start to introduce the, then this comparison, remember? You remember that? How we introduced the law the human law comparison with the God's law comparison. And we had to compare the two. We had to work out well, what is it that causes us to disobey these foundation principles? And if you work it out, a lot of it is because we just don't get how God and God's laws is completely different, are completely different to humans' laws. That's our main problem. We just don't get that. We don't understand it. So in discussing the comparison, we get to see what our problems are. And remember, that's when we examine the emotions associated with law and we examine the emotions associated with our hangover regarding law. So we start seeing, ah, a lot of our problems really come from these childhood emotions that were created through my interaction with the first lawgivers I experienced, which were my parents. Hence, not dealing with your relationship with your parents in some way is going to mean that you can't engage the relationship with God because you're going to impose the beliefs from your parent-based relationship onto that relationship with God. Hence, you're going to believe that the parents' rules, you could call them your parents' principles, couldn't you? Your parents' principles are what you finish up living with some modification for personal experience along the way. But that's not sufficient from God's perspective with regard to our desire to live in harmony with love and live in harmony with law. And remember, this whole group is about understanding God's loving laws. Obviously, if we're going, we can't live in harmony with them unless we start to understand them. Obviously, that's also true. So now that we've got some principles of law, and remember by this stage we've got our foundation principles, and you could see the, one of the most complex of those foundation principles to understand was that scope principle, right? Wasn't it? And many of you still sort of get struggling to get the principle internal, inbuilt, external uh, rules and merging with properties and energy and how the whole thing comes together. But we saw some examples of that in our later next group of principles, which were the, the or order principles. The order principles, yes. So the order principles, another set of God's principles of law now, we were starting to establish from the perspective of the human soul. We're trying to see, even though they apply to the rest of creation, we're trying to examine them from the perspective of our soul. And in that process, we learnt about hierarchy, governance, responsibility and compensation. Yes, so those four principles. So we learn these four principles. And as a result of learning about the four principles, we, we start to get a picture now of the universe and why the universe is the way it is. So, so not only do we start understanding love and God's personality, but now we're starting to get a picture of the next thing that comes up, which is the laws that govern the layers of the universe. And so we get to see the next layer of laws governing the next layer of universes that exist inside of God's infinite nature mm. fascinating really in a lot of ways don't you think has it has it been a fascinating discussion for you yeah did you think it would be um w before you read the outlines what did you think this would be this group yeah yeah <laughs> scientific and boring I don't see how those two things go together, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, 
it is a fascinating study, isn't it, on the potentials of what, uh, what God has made and how everything fits together so seamlessly in order to, for us to eventually experience in the end, which is God's underlying goal, to experience what it feels to be a part of God's infinite nature. God's sharing God's infinite nature with us by allowing these experiences. So, so we went through the hierarchy and the governance principles uh, and the responsibility principles. Remember on that first day of order principles. And we could see how there's some automated systems, like in hierarchy, there's automation based on complexity. Governance is automation based on energy. And responsibility, ah, that was an interesting one. Huh? Measuring the desire rather than the condition is an interesting idea and concept, is it not? And, and is this a concept that exists within God's interaction with ourselves as human beings? He's always measuring our desire, always measuring our intention, what we wish to do, what we want to do, not just our current condition. And it's fortunate in a way, because if you just mentioned our, measured our current condition, sometimes the results wouldn't be so good, right? But, but if he's measuring our desire to improve our condition, he can respond to that as well. And isn't it clever creating a whole series of laws that respond not only to condition, but also to desire? And in fact, if you could, you could think about it as we've presented it in the past, Desire is merged with the will-based issues, the, the current condition, to create our true soul condition in a way, isn't it? And, and it's, but it's the desire which we learnt in self-responsibility was a law-based requirement. Right? It's the desire that motivates a lot of change. Right? And I don't feel that many of you have really given it that much thought before. You're always thinking you've got to change your will, change your will. No, you've got to change your desire, which is a part of your will in the long run. Right? We did merge it with will in our first, our first assistance groups discussion. But it's a specific part of will that law, God's principles, work differently upon compared to will. So that's why we needed to introduce you to that concept, you see. So the next morning we then talked about those emotions which we've already discussed and then we went on to the, the uh, compensatory principles and the big thing that stood out there for many of you was that, that just coming to terms with the fact that God rewards goodness and, and how most of us don't believe that. We, we have this hangover that causes us to not believe that. And so frequently our lives become very selfishly motivated because we're, we're thinking that anything we do for anybody else just is going to cause a problem for me, not, not good outcomes for me. So we need to see too that now, so now we're learning some things about God. He, he's, he's measuring desire and he's measuring goodness, which when you think about what the world does, it measures neither of those two things generally, right? Neither desire nor goodness. So if you desire to do something good and it turned out bad, you still get punished with by the world. But if you desire to do something good and it turns out bad from God's perspective, he acts as if it turned out good. And he rewards you as if it has. That's a powerful thing to consider. The reality is, if, if that wasn't the truth, none of the 14 who have returned to the earth would have ever returned. Do you know why? Because we have the potential to fail. And if God only measured everything based on whether, what we actually do, rather than what our desire is to do, then can you see, with the potential of failing, uh, there's not much motivation to come. Can you see that? But the fact that God measures the desire means that there's always a benefit to coming to the earth. Because he's, he's going to measure our desire, even if we don't accomplish what we desire to accomplish, he's going to measure it as if we did desire it. Interesting. So that's even interesting for all of those 14 who have returned, right? Yeah, it's a very important thing to remember. And it can motivate a lot of really good choices on your part. 
a lot of very powerful choices can be motivated only by the fact that you know that in the end God is going to reward you for just the desire and remember it has to be pure sincere from the heart that God will reward even just the desire. You don't have to even have the final outcome that you're hoping for. As long as you have the desire and it's good and it's heartfelt and it's in harmony with love and truth, the outcome is beautiful for you. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> what a relief. What's the average parent do? Even though you had a desire, if it didn't work out, you still get hammered. Don't you? That's the end. What about at school? You had a desire to learn, you had a desire to do, and it was really, really sincere, but you just didn't do it right. So what happens? You fail. <laughs> but God treats you like you've succeeded. How compassionate is that? So we start, we start seeing this compassion and understanding that's in the compensatory process. And if we start seeing that, now we can start, instead of being motivated by resentment and other emotions that cause us to believe that nothing's possible, nothing's good's possible, there's no point in doing anything good because on the earth people are just going to punish me and, and push me around and, and make me hurt and cause pain and suffering for me and all those things. None of that matters so much anymore because we know God's not going to do that. Can you see that? How powerful is that? Very powerful place to be. So then we uh, finished the second session, the order principles second, and we, and we got on to the soul principles session. And here again, we learn, we go back in a way, don't we? We go back to the very first assistance group and we start re-examining will and desire. Will and desire. And you notice desire is faith and will is current condition. And so we start measuring, okay, there's a lot of things happening to us that are just the reflection of our current condition, trying to trigger us to see our current condition, to become, what was the other word we're looking for? To become aware, to desire awareness. Right? So all of what God's doing with our will is helping us to get to the point to desire awareness. Because without awareness, you can't really change, can you? You need to be aware. Remember the illustration we gave earlier about driving on the highway and not knowing the playground's there because you're not aware. You need to be aware to know to, that you can make different choices and decisions. And the will-based operation of God's principles help us become aware. So the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, all will-based operations trying to help us be aware. So it's very fortunate that God made those principles which then guide those laws. Otherwise, we'd walk around in a sort of a state where, oh, what did that happen for? I don't know what happened for. I don't know. We'd be constantly concerned, constantly worried, not understanding why things are happening. Right? It'd be a state of confusion. Now, love, love is trying to alleviate a state of confusion. That's what love tries to do. It tries to get you from a state of confusion to a state of awareness. Right? So, so we learn that will-based desires, will-based principles are going to help us to see ourselves and become aware. And then, and then we get to this desire thing. And how important do you think that's going to be? That understanding and engaging that principle. Man, it's just like so important, isn't it? Just understanding the power of your desire and that God responds to it. That God actually wants to respond to what you desire to do and wants to give you satisfaction of your desires if they're in harmony with the law, in harmony with love. Uh, isn't that also quite beautiful? Like What I notice on earth a lot is this thing of people are really unhappy when you feel satisfied because of jealousy and other really strong emotions like that, people, you know, you all of a sudden get a little bit of wealth and what has everyone around you going? Mm. You know, they're pulling you down. It's in Australia, Australia, it's called the tall poppy syndrome, isn't it? It's just, yeah, yank down anybody who's already is doing okay, you know, that, doesn't, that has more than what you have. And Man, it's a big problem. It's like... And... and like the uh, the world's way of thinking is take away satisfaction because you've got to keep people always needing something more. 
But God's going, no, I want to give you satisfaction. Satisfaction of your desires. As long as they're harmonious with love, it doesn't matter what they are. That's what I'm going to provide. And then we had that little you know, injection of that little talk in the middle that seemed to be confusing probably when you first read your outlines about authority, God's authority. And you thought, why have we got that there? What a <laughs> you know, that's, that's out of the place. And then you start realising, if you reject God's authority, you're rejecting God. How can you expect to receive love from a being you're rejecting? You can't. And then we examined the problems of rejecting God's authority, didn't we? And all the different you know, problems that are associated with that. And hopefully from that discussion you learnt, oh, wow, this, this God's authority thing, if I could just accept it emotionally, accept, it's very hard to accept authority on the earth, isn't it? Because we're con constantly going, you know, the authority's not that good. Sometimes they get pushy and sometimes they get demanding. And sometimes, you know, we have all these issues with authority. Sometimes they get us to do things that are not very nice. But God's not going to do those things. And then we also learnt that we have authority over some things that God is not going to address. And when we remember when we listed our creations, or we went for the physical, you remember that? We didn't even look at the spiritual or the soul based creations, and yet which ones are the most permanent? The soul based creations. It doesn't make sense. We're, we're illogical. We're, we're trying to create physically things that God is trying to, through the principles, destroy. And then on the other hand, we're creating a whole heap of things in the soul that God says, I can't destroy them without your assistance. And, and we're, we're going, wow, that means they're going to last a long time unless I do something about them. Uh, and we're not focused, our attention's not focused on destroying those things because love isn't the first principle in our life. You know, and this is where it gets down to love and truth need to be the first principles in our life. And that means our whole life, every moment of our life. And that's going to be a bit of a challenge, right? Given the world is the opposite has a completely different definition of love and, and basically thinks truth is a waste of time. So we're going to have to work against the world there. And so we have to start considering, do you want to be a part of the world and do what the world does? Or do you want to start doing the way things the way God does it? That's a question that we have to resolve, isn't it? Like something that we need to decide upon individually. It's not something you can be told to do. Because it's based on your desire. It's based on you need to choose to do it and want to do it yourself. You know, that's how it's going to be measured. So, yeah, it's interesting. So there we had will and desire. And then this morning we focused on these two last principles. The principle of redemption and transformation. Clever, clever laws. That actually engage the soul, its desire or the soul and its will, and, and causes either redemption to the perfect natural man or complete transformation into divinity, into a divine angel that's with potential. And all the joyful, blissful things that result from that. Right? And we decided to discuss some of those things and hopefully we've inspired you to think, well, that's probably a pretty good goal. Right? Hopefully that's been the case. So we examined the soul layer and then we looked at the relationship between the soul layer of the universe to the laws governing the physical layer of, of the universe, didn't we? So you're starting to see now that the universe is probably a bit more complicated than you thought it was, right? And you're also starting to understand the principle of infinity how everything exists within the infinite God which created it all. Right. <laughs> Things that you probably haven't given much consideration to before, is that right? Yeah. So with regard to all of that now, we can see our place in the universe, where that is, 
and our physical body's place and the physical things place, physical creation's place in the universe and where they are. So we're starting to understand it with a bit better conception of what is actually happening when we create, what's actually happening when we create soul-based creations versus physical or spirit, uh, metaphysical creations. Can you see before you met me, probably we've focused a lot on either the physical creations of your life or the metaphysical creations of your life. Isn't that not true? Really quite focused in that area. And what we're suggesting here is to start focus, putting your focus on destroying those soul-based creations that, that are harming you and start developing soul-grace creations which are all based on love as well and truth principles to help your life help your understanding and help the power of governance so that you can enjoy the expression of your energy which can grow as you transform and therefore you're able to do more things and have more powerful power to influence the world and remember every influence in harmony with love is eternal has eternal effects every influence out of harmony with love that you put onto the world God is trying to destroy. Right. So by now we should have a pretty good understanding, yes, of the fundamental facts about God's universe and how it all works and how it all fits together and therefore have a bit of a basic understanding of how God's laws work. And can you see, when we look at the diagram, can you see that it's a lot easier to understand principles of law than it is to understand the laws themselves. God's created it that way. But even more importantly, it's a lot easier to understand God's character and nature, and then you understand everything. Right? And this brings us to how we learn more. What do we do about learning more? So what do we do? How do we learn more? Three, four, four methods, right? First method. The method that you were trying before you heard about God's truth, which is experiment, discover the stuff through experimentation, but this is only having a will and desire for self-learning, right? In other words, you're not too interested in listening to anybody else. <laughs> because after all, isn't everybody untrustworthy? That's how most of us believe, right? And so we basically go through life measuring the pain of what we did and we go i'm not going to do that anymore but the trouble is with that is that quite often we do things like oh i fell in love i got pain so i'm not going to do that anymore but not doing it anymore means we now have the penalty of never experiencing love again so a lot of our choice and decisions in this place are way out of harmony with our future happiness right but obviously we can realize that a law must have been broken and we can attempt to find that out but most of us never even got that far with this method right did we we just basically did a will and desire to do something we got some pain and then we stopped having a will and desire to do something <laughs> And we, we didn't even get to this point to find out that a law was broken. That's why we had the pain. So can you see the average person on the planet doesn't even do method one. Scientists probably do it more than people do in, on the average. But they don't do it generally with their personal lives. They only do it with experimentation of matter or physical things. Now can you see that's, that's a process that the average person on the planet does not even engage. Can you see that? Method one. But that's an option. And so most of us finish up only engaging the two po first parts of that process. So how is it, is it no wonder that after 50, 60, 70, 80 years that we still don't know God's laws? Of course it's no wonder because we, we're not even a, a, having a feedback system going, well, that pain must mean that the something was broken. We don't even have that correlation. And so we never discover the truth about any of God's laws and we live in this structure that humans have created believing that to be true. And this is where, this is where I found many of you. Can you see? Yeah. 
in that first two things. Yeah. Problems of that are, are probably self-evident. It's slow. It causes more pain, generally. And it's follow, it has to be followed with every individual, which means you know, billions of laws and more are getting created every day, every moment, in fact. So the, the, the longer it goes on, the, the less laws I know of the total. <laughs> it's not very effective. So what's another alternative? The next alternative is learn God's laws from someone else. The only problem with that is that somebody else has to know them. <laughs> And as we've established from the first method, there's not many people on the planet who do know them. Right? And many of the people on the planet who do know some of them think they know all of them and they don't. And so you get this problem with trusting people only to find out later on that they didn't know what they said they knew. Right? So we obey each learned law in every facet on our life. Uh, even that's quite difficult, right? But imagine... You learn a law, it takes you a few days, maybe a week or two. You decide to do it. Now, in that week or two, there's been 2,500 more laws created. <laughs> so you're behind the eight ball still, right? You're still playing catch up constantly, still not really getting any real good results. So the problems with it is that slow still requires a person who has already discovered law. And by the way, that person has to want to share it with you. How many times do people on earth discover something and go, no, I'm going to patent that. I'm going to, you know, put some intellectual property laws on that so that you don't know what is discovered. How many of them actually want to share with you what they've discovered? Not many, right? And then once you've found this unique person who wants to share, then you have to still follow the law and do something about it. But the trouble is it's still getting created faster than I can learn, so still a bit of a problem, right? So then we come to method three. Learn God's principles from someone else. And you being here has done that to a degree. Now remember though, we've said to you that we've just scratched. Have we scratched the surface even? <laughs> we've just touched the surface, haven't we? of the principles obviously and obviously there's a lot more investigation to do but what we've tried to do is give you that awareness that these things exist so now the playground at least exists in your mind at least it's not my, maybe in your heart yet but it exists here you know it's possible mm causes us to ponder, reflect and eventually maybe make some choices and decisions, right? So you obey the principles. The problems with that, of course, it's faster. It still requires a person who's already discovered every principle and still requires that person to want to share them with you. Of course, if they have discovered the principles and they really apply them, it's highly likely they'll want to share them with you. Is that not true? So that, that there's a better chance there now um, of you know, getting actually some information from somebody at least. But again, the process needs to be followed with every individual principle. And there's two other issues that we've learned, and that is that understanding these principles intellectually, have you found it quite difficult at times? Yes? So, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> Whereas emotionally understanding him is much, much easier. But that requires a reception of God's love in order to expand the soul to understand. So it's now we're getting in sort of almost the catch-22 situation where I have, to receive, I have to trust God enough to receive some of God's love to understand the law that will tell me about how to receive God's love. <laughs> Can you see... It would be far better off if we'd be far better off if we trusted and had faith from the beginning without having to be told in a lot of ways, wouldn't it? If we just trusted in God's goodness, we probably would have received some of God's love and therefore automatically start feeling some of these laws. Yeah. And you can see again that God's principles require God's love to receive as well, so that makes it obviously something that we need to consider doing, receiving God's love in order to understand these principles. 
Huh? What's number four? Preferred method. Preferred method. <coughs> the preferred method is connect with God's personality and nature. Remember at the diagram. The diagram had God's personality and nature at the beginning of the diagram. If you can connect with God by feeling God, then naturally you'll be able to walk through life and all of a sudden the issue comes up and you'll be able to feel the principle or the principles because God can share from her feelings the principle with you. Now, even learning the principles isn't necessary. Because this connection you have with God teaches you every principle. Does that make sense? And when I say it isn't necessary, you still come to understand them. You still come to learn about them, but you learn about them through this relationship with God. When I was in earth in the first century, I didn't understand the full extent of the transformation principles. I didn't. I didn't know what was that. I, 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 could, I was at one with God on the concept that I needed to merge with my mate. But, but I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what capacities that would give us. I didn't understand that at that time. I didn't even understand like scope to its full degree or hierarchy to its full degree or any of those things. I understood a lot of it because I taught and I taught a lot of it through trying to give illustrations and examples but I didn't understand most of it fully you know but progress means more understanding each time I didn't understand it mathematically either right, back then I understood it emotionally but not so much mathematically the mathematics of it came to me as I went on but <laughs> you see so the beauty of this method is that is that everything happens through the personal relationship with God. That's the beauty of the method. Of course, there are problems with it in that you have to have the relationship in order for it to happen. So there's still the need to trust God and desire God enough to establish the relationship. But it is the fastest method. So I put to you, if you really want to understand all of God's principles, the best thing to do is to engage the principle of transformation because all of those other principles will be given to you as knowledge. Does that make sense? So you know how we struggle with the principle of infinity and the logic of it? Well, that won't happen when you have received some of God's love. You won't struggle with that principle. Because the transformation of the soul allows the understanding to be achieved. Can you see too, this point here is really important. To live a life of obedience to principle and respect of God because you want to. Can you see, for most of us, sure, we can say probably that we haven't understood a lot of the principles, right? But we have understood some of them, haven't we? And we still don't live in harmony with them. Can you see that? We still don't choose to live in harmony. That, uh, that tells us that we, that we really don't understand pain and suffering and what causes it, really. Not yet, anyway. And this is why we needed the second group to, uh, to g gather what pain and suffering is all about, what causes it inside of us and the choices we're making. And you've seen in this group that every desire you have out of harmony with love, of which addictions are, aren't they? They're just desires out of harmony with love, really. They're just going to keep causing more pain. So hopefully you've seen that relationship as well. So there's our choices, really. There are four choices. There are the four choices that everyone in the world actually has before them. They can do it. Any one of those four methods are really the four methods. There's, nothing, there's no other real methods available to you. So it just depends on which method you're going to use as to how your life is going to pan out in the long run and how rapidly your life will transform. It will depend on what methods you choose. But I, I can't emphasise you to, to you enough that it's a personal choice. We can't do anything about your personal choice. 
We're not even allowed to under the law, are we, to do something about your personal choice. All we can do is make suggestions to you. That's all we can do. Unless you decide to govern yourself by being self-responsible, there's not really any good outcomes that are even going to come from a six-day program on discussing God's laws. There has to be some personal decisions that are made. That's what I'd encourage you to make. Now, the reason why we've done all that is because of the next groups. So what, let's have a, just a brief look at the next group. The next group is going to be about understanding sin, understanding sin and its causes. That's the next group. Now, can you see that if you can get the principles, you start to get the enormity of sin, don't you? Can you see that? And all the stuff it causes in your life, both sins of omission and sins of commission. We, we, we get to see the enormity of them. Omission being not wanting to transform. There's the sin of omission. And bang, what does that cause? A whole lot of potentials that are no longer available. Right? And sins of commission, well, that causes degradation of our soul. So can you see the relationship between God's principles and laws and how they expose sin? Can you see that? That's what they do. They let us see what sin is. And isn't that a part of our awakening to sin? We need to see what sin is. So, so many of you might have a bit of a negative view of our next two groups, which are understanding and sin and its causes and removing sin and its causes. But the next two groups probably have some of the highest potentials for your growth, right? Don't they? So that's an interesting thing. And you, can you see that if you didn't see the big picture, you'd sort of not really understand the point of what you're doing? if we talked about sin and removing it. Can you see that? But now that you get a bit of an idea of the big picture, you can go, OK, I see where this fits in now, what we need to do. Engage redemption principles, engage transformation principles, understand compensation, understand the principles generally. Now I've got a great capacity to no longer sin. So we're going to be discussing that obviously a lot when it comes to your next couple of groups. We'll talk more about the groups later. So sin would not exist without the existence of God's principles and laws. There'd be no such concept of sin. I can't understand sin unless I understand God's principles and laws. I wouldn't even know what a sin is. If I don't understand, understand sin, how can I be aware of sin? I can't. If I'm not aware of sin, I'll probably continue to live in sin and therefore live out of harmony with God's principles and laws. So you can see why we had this conversation with you before the next one. Yeah. Can you also see why we had it after the first two groups? You can you see, in a lot of ways, you would have come to this very... If this was the very first group, you would have been going, Whoa. How does this all fit into my relationship with God? But after seeing the first two groups, seeing the importance of truth, love, faith and action, and after seeing the next group, seeing the importance of understanding self, being aware of self and what self really is, now we can start to see how law impacts upon all of those things, right? So we have the ability to join this information together and start to contemplate it a lot more deeply than we have. So that's our desire for you. Our desire for you is to begin this process now. Now, Mary and I have decided that actually for the whole of next year, we're not going to be doing another assistance group. So you've got plenty of time now to go back over the material. We'll be producing more material, but we're not going to be doing more assistance groups in the next year. And, and you, you've got the time to go back over this material and really let this material affect your heart because the thing that needs to change inside the majority of us is desire. The desire isn't sincere yet. If it was, you'd be doing different things than you're currently doing, right? So your desire is not sincere yet. So let 
Let your heart be affected by the information and work out what you desire, work out what you want to do. Now it might turn out you don't want to follow divine truth anymore. Right? That would be better than coming along to another group and sleeping through half of it, right? Wouldn't it? At least you'd have a desire to do something else. Yeah? And then somebody else who has a desire to know can pop along in your place. That would be good too. So don't feel that we, we feel that you need to stay with it or, or whatever. It's not the way we feel at all. The way we feel is you have options. You have choices, decisions to make. And up to now, many of you have not sincerely made these decisions. You haven't. So reappraise, sort of like, you know, you might do it at the end of the new year, in the beginning of another year, sorry, the end of one year, the beginning of the other. Most people or some people say they sit down and appraise, you know, they're going to give up this or give up that. Are you going to embrace desire from now on or not? Use this like the turning point in your life. Are you going to embrace desire? And if you're going to embrace desire, what are you going to desire? Make sure you choose it with some conviction inside of your heart, right? Embrace desire. Not because Jesus and Mary tell you to or some guy claiming to be Jesus who you haven't really sorted out yet tells you to, but because you believe God exists and you believe maybe God does have these laws, maybe I should experiment, maybe I can experiment with this concept of desire and find out whether it's true. Do it for that reason. Or decide to um, go and be as bad as you can be or, or as good as you believe you are, you, you can be now in your current state. Whatever you decide to do, at least do it with some passion. <laughs> do it with some desire. Instead of having another year where it just goes past in your life going, ah, da -da 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 -da. no desire, no passion, no, you know, and of course during that year what's going to happen? Barely anything, right? <laughs> Isn't it? And, and do you really want to keep wasting year after year like this? Well, change your mind. Change your desire. If you don't change your desire, no change is possible. Key point of the group, right? If you don't change your desire, no change is possible. Your will will determine automatically your future actions and this is what's been happening a lot for many of you. So change that. Do something about that. So hopefully when we come to the group, the sin group, we have uh, you know, 50, 60, 70 people, whatever amount there is, so I don't know what that would be. Who knows, it might be 500 people and we might have to get a different auditorium, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I'd like to see every person sitting in their seat really wants to remove sin and really wants to understand it and has a childlike inquisitive feeling about it rather than just a bored here he goes again feeling. Does that make sense? That's what we want to achieve really in the end. And if it means that there's only 10 people who have that, then it'll be 10 people. That's all right. That's what we'd like to see. Because, it, because in the end, those 10 people can be assisted to change or transform, then those 10 people will definitely influence lots of other people. <laughs> definitely. So this is where we'd like to go with you. We'd like you to remind yourself constantly of what you've learned and how that now can influence your decisions and desires. Right? If you let it, if you choose to make it influence them. We want to look at the issues of having a relationship with God and receiving God's love is the most rapid way of coming to understand these principles and laws. So what are you doing about this relationship? Are you just sitting on the fence all the time, believing a whole heap of things that your parents have taught you about love and about authority and about law and all those things? Or are you going to change these things by exercising a desire to know and believe something different that is based upon facts? I'm not asking you to believe anything that's not. 
that you can test it to see if it is. So test it. Don't sit down and go, I'll just let everybody else test it and when they've worked out what's right and wrong, I'll just follow what they say. Don't do that. Do it for yourself. You're worth it. You're the pinnacle of God's creation. Of course you're worth it. Your future is worth it as well. A person who loves God wants to accept God's authority and God's principles and laws. So look at your desire for them. Examine those principles again and go, okay, do I really want to do that? Honestly, do I really get that? And do I really want to do that? Or am I just fooling myself here? What, what is it I want, really? And examine those principles and desires. There's 16 of them, and there's a limited amount, isn't it? 16. It's like, potentially there's how many? Infinite amount. So we've only got 16 out of an infinite amount, potentially. But the beauty of them is they express God's personality and nature. So, so hopefully what this group has done is started to tell you something about God that you didn't know before. And also tell you something about love that you didn't get before. And then you, then you can start saying, do I want that kind of love or not? Do I want to have a relationship with that kind of person or not? You're informed about what you're choosing to accept or choosing to desire. And that's hopefully what the group has achieved. So if we don't understand God's laws and principles, then we don't know when we're sinning. And, and so when we come to the next group, we're going to go, what, what, what? I don't know what's going on here. Because we're going to be referring now. From now on, we'll be referring to these principles. And I'll just be briefly sometimes referring to scope principle against that. Off we go. Next one. And you've got to remember, what? scope principle, what was that one? Was that the one where the governance, was that the one the hierarchy? Was that the one, you know what I mean? You want to know these things and understand them enough so that we can refer to them quite briefly and it hits you and you understand. So that's not possible unless you do some work here as well. So that's what we'd like to encourage you to do. Sound all right to you? Yeah. And we feel that if you do those things, then knowing and loving God will become your priority in life instead of it being something that you just keep putting off because other things crowd it out all the time. And that means your life will change. Where you live will change, what you do will change, how you embrace your life will change, who you're with will change. A lot of things will change. And many of you are petrified of that. That's why you haven't had the desire, right? Deal with that. You want change. Right? Change is the thing that dri desire drives. Right? You want change. You want to be able to sort things out. You want to be happier in the long run, whatever that entails. Uh, so that means many of you are going to find the next year of life challenging. If you truly embrace the principles, you will find the next year of life challenging in your relationships, in your daily life, in your work situation. You'll find it challenging. Embrace the challenge of it. Embrace it as a learning experience. Remember this life here on earth is a very short part, a very minor part of your experience. You want to extract as much life out of it as you can get, right? Much learning, as much learning as you can possibly get out of it. That's the priority. Not money generation or security generation, but learning generation. Use your opportunities to learn. It's fantastic opportunities here on this planet to learn. Particularly living in an environment where there's very little love, you've got lots of opportunities to learn and express love under the worst of conditions and situations. And this will, it, this will create within you a very steadfast feeling of desire for that love. Can you see? Far more than if you just had it easy. If someone just comes along, yeah, I love you, everyone loves everybody and everyone's easy. You, you wouldn't understand some of these principles of how steadfast you're going to need to be for the principles of love and truth in your life and how that will carry you forward through the rest of your existence. So that's what we'd like to encourage you to do. Sound good? Well, that's what we're going to leave you with. 
But what we're going to do now, it's, so that's the end of our knowing and loving God discussion. But what we're going to do is on the end of this discussion, we're going to talk to you about our future plans. Do you, do you mind if we do that for the next 10 or 20 minutes? Yep. Okay, so we'll, we'll start talking about some of that. Mary's going to come up with me. So let's firstly look at the assistance groups. We've already examined those, so let's... Uh, Start with what Miss Mary and my personal plans are. G'day, darling, how are you? Hey, oh, you need to turn this <laughs> off. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. You, you're on? Yep. Yeah, now I'm there. So, so yeah. Okay. Now, obviously, we feel quite strongly that our own personal progression is very, very important. And so over the next year, that's going to be the primary focus of our life, actually. Um, with the last year, this three, this three assistance group have taken a huge amount of my time, as you can imagine. It takes around 500 hours to, present, to prepare each group and, uh, and obviously then to present it. So that, so that means that nearly 12 months of this year, I've been working for to 10 to 12 hours every day for the whole year. Now, that's the, the sad thing about that is it's meant that my own personal progression has suffered. Does that make sense? So I, I've got to address that as an issue of self-love, so that's what I'm doing next year. Does that make sense? So that's our goal. Yep. Thanks, guys. So um, we also feel that in many cases there's not a strong desire for God in most people and that we talk to still. And, and we feel that we need to give you an opportunity to make this choice at some point. Like, and that's going to mean personal contemplation time. And if we're spending a lot of time with you, then it's time that, that you're not personally contemplating what you want to do with your life and what, what kind of relationship with God you want. So that's something that we feel quite strongly about too. We need to give you time to make choices and decisions. And next year we're planning to do some things that might help you do that. But, but the reality is that in the end, it is your choice and decision. It's your life. God respects your choices and decisions, even though God's laws might try to correct some of those choices and decisions if they're out of harmony with love. But God respects them. God respects the fact that he's given you free will, this gift that you have the choice to make some decisions about. So we'd like... So we feel for ourselves that's what we want to do. We want to make the choice to, to improve our own condition further and uh, this year has been really good for us to be honest in a lot of ways too because Mary and I have come closer as a result of this year and 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 we have done a lot of personal development but but it has suffered from a normal year for us because of the amount of time in particular that I've had to spend developing these groups yeah, yeah. Does that make sense so that's our plans that's our plan for next year. That's our primary plan. Everything else we do next year is sort of like an uh, add-on to that in terms of helping that, helping that process of development. So we'll just go through some of the things we're planning to do next year so that you can see what our plans are. Of course, there's the assistance groups themselves that we're still planning, we're going to need to develop. Each, as I said, each assistance group takes around three months to develop. And so, and so if there's two assistance groups in the following year, in 2018, then I need six months of time to develop them. Now, obviously, that automatically writes off six months next year. Does that make sense? So it is possible that you won't be having groups in 2018 as well, as a result of that. And what we've decided now, instead of doing what we've been doing, which is setting a date for a group and then developing the group, we're, what we're going to do now is develop the group and after I've developed the group, we're going to set the date for the group. So we'll give you six months from the time we finished to make your plans and bookings and everything. We, the group will be sh scheduled six months after that point. After we've developed it. Yeah. Does that make sense? And what that does is it takes off the deadlines from my life, which are a major problem in influencing what I can then do in terms of personal progress. So, yeah. yeah. Obviously, it's an issue of love of you guys that everything is prepared and thoroughly um, organised and 
presented and the website's all up to date and all of these things ha have to happen if we have a deadline by a certain time and that means automatically you've got to put other things on hold just to, to meet that um, requirement of love and so this is a way of changing that so that so I'm still meeting the you. requirement of love yep. of you by you know, telling you well in advance when a when a group will be but we're also now meeting a requirement of love of ourselves by making sure we've developed the group in a in a in a re more relaxed sort of fashion from our perspective while we're still having to deal with our personal emotions and stuff so that by the time we come to doing the group the group's already organized and there's no great deadline and no great rush to finish everything off and you'll also have the outlines then for six months as well so you have time to think and consider what the material might be that you're dis that discovering and so forth and you have six months of time of life to save up for coming or or wherever it will be we're not certain where it will be obviously depending on how many come but uh, you know you have time to save up and make all those arrangements as well so we feel that's a more loving state for everybody involved does that make sense to everyone yep so although we've put on the dates of the groups as being in 2018 February March and 2018 November at this stage that is up in the air because we may finish up shifting these does that make sense and we will see how we go you know by the middle of the year I might feel like presenting one of them and preparing one of them which will be three months of time and if I do then uh, you know the reality is I've started working on them already so um, <laughs> both of them both of, both of them already um, so we've already got sort of almost an outline of what we will be presenting the next groups we're actually going to make sh shorter again we feel that next groups have the potential to be quite emotionally confronting you'll need some time and so we're thinking we'll probably limit the days to around three hours or so um, rather than making them as long as we've made these this group does that make sense? We did actually consider breaking this group into two. This this current this group, current yeah. group into two, given that it's very information intensive. But we thought, no, in the end, um, it's incomplete. If it's you incomplete, don't follow you know. It yeah. yeah, and it would be a shame to not present a fairly complete group in this group. Whereas the next group, we can shorten it and still make it a complete group because now you have the foundation of understanding sin and its causes we can now refer to things very rapidly as a result of that and make the next group quite concise and tight and also quite specific focused on that sin area of our lives to help you go through some redemption issues does that make sense so that's our goal for the groups obviously there's five five new groups that we're still looking at right so still looking at those subjects understanding sin and its causes removing sin and its causes then engaging god's laws of love obviously we're going to come back to the principles again there aren't we with engaging god's laws of love and hopefully you guys are going to be telling us how you've done it experiments yeah, yeah how you've done it and then you can run that group <laughs> hopefully by the end of it all of you could run the groups right that'd be fantastic imagine 100 people going out into the world sharing this information with lots of people who don't already know it. that'd be quite powerful and and as i've mentioned i think in previous uh closings of other groups if you guys can trust this kind of process that we've got you on and really establish what we've covered in the first one and then the second group and then the third group there is a real um organic flow to what we're to what we're doing so that by the time you get to loving god you're ready if you've implemented everything that we've spoken about until that point so yeah if you can trust the person in the higher condition of love has got you in good hands with this education and the real person in a higher condition of you need to trust god you need that's that's where i still feel many are still not really trusting that god's good right mm. yeah yeah there are a few issues we'd like to talk about just for a moment about the groups so mary's got a few notes that we just wanted to raise with you about the groups themselves mm -hmm. so first uh, the first it. thing is um with regard to cancellations and yeah. things like that 
Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a problem, you know, because a lot of people are counselling at the last minute, even though they know, even long before then, that they're not coming. And we feel this demonstrates a lack of appreciation for the groups. And uh, we also feel that it also demonstrates a lack of care and consideration for other people who want to attend it. Because in, in this group, we had quite a lot of people waitlisted for a long period of time, and, and yet not everyone turned up, even. So, so this is an indication that there's not, there's, there's not love. Obviously, you're all turned up, so it's not yeah, it talking about you here. doesn't apply to you, but this is for the video. For, for people who are booking and not attending and can't, or n either not... Or counselling at the last minute. Not attending minute or, or cancelling... Even in the last month. The l if you think about it in November, I, uh, sorry, in October, Toba. I sent you guys an email requesting that you cancel if you can't attend. Anyone who didn't cancel in that the next few days after that point, and really, who didn't come here, and who didn't come, or who cancelled quite, um, you know, we had people cancelling 24 hours, 48 hours before the start of this event. We've actually decided that they're no longer invited to groups in this series, hmm. and that's just because they've demonstrated that they can't be relied upon to attend if they do book. And so they are really taking a place from someone who does really want to attend and is going to do everything that they can we to We also attend. feel it demonstrates people's attitude to money a fair bit too because, because we're not asking any money book up front and asking money from people and because there's no cancellation rules other than just be loving, people then take advantage of that unfortunately which means, that, which means they take the place of other people and they don't consider that they're doing such a thing that's, very, that's quite unloving. So, so we feel there's a lot of unloving behaviours that are... In, and they wouldn't do that if we had a paid event. They wouldn't. They'd counsel well in advance so that way they wouldn't have to pay the money. But because there's not a paid event, people leave it till the very last day, second day, last day even. And uh, that's obviously a demonstration of a lack of love and consideration for other people and also a lack of love for us, actually. And because the it, Because we're getting cancellations right at the last minute for things we've organised. And um, there's a lot of care that we take. As you might have noticed, there's a name tag for everyone. There's a lot of effort to make sure your sitting environment, even the basics, is, are comfortable. That we you have know, enough seats for you. That we know? have enough seats, that you're, you know, the temperature's nice, that nobody... You know, there's so much in the days, even once we arrive here, that we do to ensure things are comfortable and amenable for all of you to sit and learn. And so when people really... People who don't show up are really not respecting any of the time of any of us who do any of those things to make... And they don't have to show up, they can counsel well in advance, that's the all. Abso absolutely. That's the alternative. It's the people who remain booked in and do just don't uh, appear. Now, that we understand if people have, you know, of some course. kind of sickness or of disease course. that causes them not to be able to come or... Or a sudden... Some uh, sudden death in the family yeah. or something like that, which, which happens, but none of that has happened, actually. Yeah. No. No. So, yeah. so that's an indication that people still are listening to talks about love, but that's all they're really doing, listening to talks about love, <laughs> not doing much else. And we want to change that by changing the way we respond to that kind of behaviour. And hopefully these people will start learning the lessons of love through our interaction with them. Yeah. Yeah. It's so that's one of the main things we wanted is, to adjust. And it probably brings us, though, to another um, thing when we're talking about payment. What we've noticed is that there's a bit of a trend that's happened within a lot of you who are actually attending, which is, if you remember, we, we, we educated you guys about what it costs to actually put on a group. So, and we divided that by the amount of people averagely attending, and we publicised a figure. Now, what I've noticed happening um, is that there's been a shift in understanding about what that's all about and an attitude that it's a payment to attend. So people feeling that they must give, or that they only must give that amount, not above or below, but they, they must give it. It's no longer viewed as a donation, sort of a feeling coming with that. And that's really lost the spirit of what we're all about. 
Um, and I know some of you I did speak to individually about that before you attended, just that attitude. And even people approaching me saying, look, I've got to cancel my place. Uh, could I have a refund or I don't want a refund? Or, and that really donations are not refundable. <laughs> um, and if you have a look at our website, it says quite clearly that. Yes. Mm. And, but even the spirit of a donation means that you haven't... It's, it's not given as a fee. And I've noticed there's a feeling growing, which is just coming from injuries that a lot of you still have regarding money and paying for services and things, which is not reflecting that you understand what a donation is. So when we provided that figure, it was not to say that each of you are expected to give that amount. We were just saying we need to cover the costs before we can go ahead. And if each of you gave this much, that would cover the costs. Mm. But obviously you're not expected to give that amount if you can't afford it and equally if you really appreciate something often you'll want to give more than that won't you to enable it to go ahead and if you're in harmony with principles of love and feeling generous and wanting to enable other people to attend who can't afford to contribute towards the cost of the group then you would be motivated to give more wouldn't you in a donor if you were viewing it like a donation and notwithstanding all of that, at the end of the day, it demonstrates that our time, Mary and my time, is not valued at all. You're only paying for the expenses we're incurring. You're not actually giving us anything at all in, in terms of appreciation. So many of you think that when you donate $330 for a group, that you're actually showing appreciation to us. You're not. You're paying for your own expenses, really, the expenses of us being here, that's all. You're not not for the 500 hours that went into for anything the else. prep at all. Yeah. You know, you're not even... So that's an indication that you don't... There's not real gratitude. Does that make sense? It's just a, it's just a thinking that, oh, you're, you really are just paying for your own bum on the seat. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? And, and I think one of you even good. said that to me. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and, and that's got nothing to do with us. That's got everything to do with the venue. We've got no control over the costs of the venue, obviously. We just had to accept them based on what they are. And, and the reality is if we had our own venue, we wouldn't have... We probably wouldn't be here, right? If we had our own venue to run the event, we wouldn't be here running it here, probably. It'd be great if one day we had our own venue, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah. But we can't have our own venue if all that's donated is exactly the cost of each <laughs> group. Can you see that? Because we haven't got enough money then to, to get together enough things to build our own venue. Do you yeah. see? So it's sort of like a, in the end you can't create more than what's currently there unless something changes with regard to attitudes to donations. And, and that is attitude is also quite pervasive right across the world. Of course. Yeah. In the sense that, you know, we haven't considered that if just every person put in 10 bucks a week, a week there's 4,500 people listening. 10 bucks a week for 4,500 people is $45,000 a week. Imagine, we, we could have a venue within six months. And this is where, if we're thinking... See, a lot, of, a lot of you have a lot of issues of trust of us, obviously, because otherwise... Otherwise it would already happen, happening. right? But um, if, if we think about how our lack of generosity actually limits the growth of truth on the planet, y you know, just, just that limitation, that, that feeling of lack, I've just got to pay for my bid and that's it, um, mm. prevents other people from actually experiencing the gifts that you ha are already experiencing. And the reality is we publish, we've published for the last five years our actual income and, and, and expenses and where we spend our money. Um, so you all know what it is, if you want to know. Um, so by now there should be at least some level of trust, <laughs> you would have, I would have thought, you know. And the fact that we keep giving and producing and, and wanting to share this yeah. would inspire some trust. So we feel there's a couple of issues there that need to be examined. Of yep. course, we don't care about it really in the end. Because it's not, in the end, when I say we don't care about it, in the end, we know the information. We know what we need to do. We know that the speed of us, uh, us doing things depends on cooperation. Yeah. We know that too. We know two people can't achieve what we hope to achieve in the long run 
without there being assistance from others. We know that too. But assistance has to come from the heart. It can't come from any other source. So we don't want to get... We, we're not asking here for you to do something that's against what you feel to do. do you or see? out of guilt or, or any guilt emotion or any other that's emotion. out of harmony with the principles. Yeah. yeah. We can't cooperatively co uh, um, create unless certain things happen. And that will happen in time, given people's, you know, as you connect more to God and you connect more to sincerity and connect more to the principles, you'll see the need for some of these to happen. And eventually, we can have some kind of an organisation that sorts out these things for us. For us. And, and in the end, hopefully, what we're hoping to have is that a group of people manage all of that and all we do is just rock up. <laughs> and do the talking. Now, you imagine if, we, if all we had to do is rock up and do the talking in the pre-prep, we could get a lot more done, right? We could talk a lot more. <laughs> I don't know if you want that, but... <laughs> yeah. So, so we know that it's going to be a cooperative effort in the long run. We know that. And we know that... Uh, and, we're pr and we're very patient. I've been teaching Divine Truth now this time around for 12 years, right? And we know how slow it is with people because there's desires that need to be engaged. So we know that. So we're very patient about all that. But it's just something for your consideration. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yep. And all of that being said, we know that many of you don have donated to us this week and we want to sincerely thank you for mm. those donations. Yeah. In fact, we, what we'd like to do now is thank quite a few people, if yes. that's OK with you guys. Um, firstly, uh, we wanted to say, Corny's not here today. You'll notice that he do he's, he's looking Kelly doesn't different. look like Corny. Yeah. <laughs> You notice that. So Connie's gone. Where's he gone? Well, he's actually doing something he desires, which is to, to do a building course. He's, he's in the process of becoming a certified, a certified builder. builder. And uh, it happened to fall on these days, so this, this Saturday. Um, so he's off doing that. Now, he, 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 he forgot to thank you yesterday for your donations this week. And he'd just like to, we'd just like to convey to you thanks. On his, on behalf. his behalf. He was sad that he forgot to thank you guys. Yeah. So. Yeah, he, he, he didn't really forget. He, he just didn't want to interrupt me from talking. <laughs> and by the time, exactly, <laughs> by yeah. the time I stopped, <laughs> it was all over and he, he yeah. didn't get the chance. Yeah. So yeah. we'd just like to, he'd just like to thank you. As would we and, and Lena and Igor and also um, Eloisa, Eloisa and Kelly. Kel. Uh, Kelly and Eloisa. Eloisa will be doing, uh, Eloisa's done this week on that camera. And Kelly will be doing next week on, on that, that camera. camera. And both of them have to do the days that Corny's away. So, so it happens to be the Saturday. Yep. So there they are. Thank, thank you guys for your... Uh, so, yeah. Now they, so they have to stand up and concentrate as long as I do. And that's a long time. It's a long time to be still and focused on everything that's aware of everything that's going on in the room. Just like Lena and Igor are having to be focused 100% of the time oh that one of us is up here on multiple tasks, actually. You'll see both Lena and Igor are managing multiple things at once. Yeah. Um, so, so Igor's been doing sound and video. Lena's been doing video of the main event plus the tagging which is going to chapterize all of these videos for you mm -hmm. so um, along with some stuff i'll do later so so we'd like to thank you guys again yeah. it's so lovely <laughs> thank you yeah. We'd also like to thank you guys for the fact that you put in donations enough for us to actually create the event well in yes. advance. The reality is this event was paid for almost nine months ago. So that's really, really good. That's meant that we could make a lot of plans, get a lot of things organised. Even um, some of the uh, around $5,000 of our new cameras, we, we bought, as you can see, they're all new cameras um, for those of you who were here before. And the reason why we had that is we had three of our cameras break down during our last event. So we had to... They were getting old. They were getting they were old. old. They were seven, six to seven years old. And so we had to start looking at replacing them. And we've selected a camera and put in, you know, and the guys are just getting used to it. So some, some of the images you'll find in this image, unfortunately, are still a bit blurred, you know, because still getting used to the cameras. The cameras are not as fast. 
it's focusing so so there's a bit of a slow speed we have to somehow fix as well which we'll try to work out before our next group but but the cameras are awesome quality so that's mean that we can adjust the color and and a lot of the other functions which we have done to match everything and that makes Igor's job a lot easier because he's trying you know when you're trying to color match a whole heap of cameras that are photographing in different colors it's pretty much impossible and um, without going through every frame and but this way we've got all the colors matched and therefore the camera output should be a lot more consistent you remember the last one there's a bit dark sometimes a bit light other times and so forth and and th because we had some breakdowns we had different cameras uh, to use this time hopefully it, some might be a bit blurred but they'll all be the same color at least <laughs> beautiful color <laughs> yeah yeah so the, the, the edit should be done um, we are actually trying to educate some people about editing as well in the process of editing this time because we do need to have more than just Lena and Igor knowing how to do the edits and the final production. And so it's going to take a little bit of time. We expect the edits will be out sometime and released on YouTube sometime in January. Um, probably be more like late January than early January at this stage. And um, it may be sooner than that. But given the fact we might still finish the edit by Christmas, but, but slow speed of we send them to the US and up to upload, and I control all that, but it, but it has to get to the US, you know, and, and bearing in mind it's Christmas time, you know, it might turn out to be sort of mid to late January by the time those videos are all published and finished. And can I just mention, you mentioned about, thank, you thanked everyone uh, for you know, your donations enabling all of that process just to happen. But also, I feel this group is the material in this group, as I'm sure you, some of you are now appreciating, is, is very, very valuable for the world to hear. And I would like to thank you for your donations that made it possible to hold the event. I, we both do. Um, but also in the way that you were willing to utilise the new system for questions because it actually kept the level of uh, information and quality of information at a much higher standard than some of the previous groups. Some of you were willing to challenge your addictions with questioning and it's just... It's just I feel that the calibre of what we were able to cover was really improved by that. So mm. thank you very much for not only your donations, but your participation in this new way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, thanks yeah. guys for that. Thank you. Okay, I think okay. those are the main things we needed to... Uh, to yes, I uh, just thank you to people who everyone who was willing to take a turn as a mic runner as well. That was mm. really awesome. Mm. You all yeah. did pretty well, huh? Didn't get in the way of the, the <laughs> video very much and quite conscious <laughs> right so that's good that's after good. a while you get used to it and uh, you think in the first part it's a bit, a bit nervous right feel a bit nervous but after a while it's just like run around run around you get used to it yeah just the final things we were going to mention were that all of your questions that didn't get to be answered that haven't been answered in other materials so the ones that you've written down they're not lost we'll be logging all of them so that we can answer them in our studio mm. sessions so thank you also for those and so don't feel like you'll never hear the answer <laughs> although if you develop your relationship with god you might you'll have the answer <laughs> before we record it so yeah, yeah. and the final thing was that we're going to say our goodbyes to you um now now from now and so we won't be having the breakfast on Sunday morning as we have done for the previous couple of groups. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Teresa, yeah. I think that's all, hey? Mm hmm Yeah. Have you got deadlines for questions to go to you for each of the assistance groups? No. Okay. No. We, of course, uh, are going to make some plans in the next year and and that's probably what we want to talk about with your next and plans in the following year what we're going to do this coming 2017 um but one of those plans is to answer as many of the things that we've covered in assistance groups as we can and myself and mary may finish up having some discussions about different talks as well where we feel the information was not properly understood or or where the questions weren't really oops off, that's where, right, the, you're getting where the questions weren't really um you know 
what we felt were rela relatable to the material. We will be inventing some of our own questions that will be relatable to the material and do that in that way. We had some really great <coughs> discussions just preparing the, the material together. As you can imagine. Yeah, and so it would be great to... Some of the things that you guys are thinking about, we're thinking about things in a much different way or a bigger scale or uh, different implications, and so it would be good to cover some of those things that aren't even covered in questions yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So continue to send in your questions and uh, we will definitely try to get to them. At the moment, um, Lena is creating a huge spreadsheet of questions basically and we're trying to categorise them. We also are trying to work out what we want to put into our fundamental truths discussions which we are going to do. So do you want to talk perhaps about we that? need to look yeah. at these projects that we're yeah. working on. There's quite a lot of them, so you wonder after looking at the projects, are we really having a rest next year <laughs> and working on ourselves or what's really going on? But we managed to do a fair bit in, in our time. So firstly, there may be a few seminar presentations next year where we just ad hoc decide, oh, let's go to Mergen and do a presentation. So there may be old school. some of the old, <laughs> old presentations happening. There's the God's Way project, which we're quite heavily involved in. That, uh, you may not realise, but uh, God's Way has been incorporated as a company, a member-based company here in Australia. And it's also purchased uh, the learning centre at Kushni from the current owners. So, then, yeah. so God's Way is now the owner of that centre. And it's operating under a very similar constitution to the God's Way of Love constitution that was written. Yep. So, so you understand what that's all about? Yep. yep. So, so the reality is there's a lot of things we're trying to do there. The very first set of things is we're trying to mentor the people who will be running the uh, God's Way uh, project, if you can call it that. And uh, that involves the directors of the project and, and also some assistances eventually will get going as well. And there's quite a lot of things that need to be achieved from a people person, a people per, uh, point of view, and that's what we'll be focusing on in the coming years. What, what we'd like to see is in the next five years that we can get a team of people that are really dedicated to actually practising God's truth in their day-to-day -day life, and, and then we see that you know, within that period of time, hopefully we start to have some outcomes that we have a long-term goal of having um, with regard to that organisation. And then eventually start establish them, them using those people as a mechanism of teaching people around the world to do the same thing. So that's our underlying goal there. We also have um, a volunteer education project going on, which is... Whoops, right, uh, right. Yeah, volunteer education project, which is basically volunteers, there's people who offer their time and energy quite frequently to us, but frequently we can't use their time and energy because they are often well out of harmony with love principles or truth principles or, or other principles like economy and function and so forth. And so, so we feel that we want to start an education project that actually vets volunteers. And educates people and educates them. about what it really means to volunteer, yeah. to give your time. Yeah. So the first part of the project is like a 12-day course, I suppose you could call it. It's not all in one, it's one, one day at a time over 12 weeks, um, where people are confronted in different areas of their life to get them to be to the point. The people with the desire to volunteer now actually get ready to actually have the right attitude to volunteer. Does that make sense? So that project has begun and we'll be, we'll be spending time with the people who will be managing that project for us, which we've chosen. And, uh, and myself and Mary will obviously have a part to play in ma ensuring that project meets its outcomes and goals that we want. Now, we'll, if you would like to be a part of that initial 12-week program, you can email us at office at divinetruth.com. And indicate your desire. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean that Can you will be a part of be it. Be a part of it. Because if we feel there are initial problems with certain things, and particularly when it comes to spirit influence, then we will probably sit down and talk to you about those problems and say, no, we're not going to let you be a part of it just yet till you sort through those issues. Does that make sense? We, our desire is to give everyone the opportunity to learn from where they're at. Um, how they can take the next step towards being ready to volunteer. So for some people that will mean doing some things before they actually come and be a part of the program. Yeah. And then for others it will be jumping into the program and seeing, seeing how they... Seeing what comes up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
we've got a fairly uh, specific program of what we're trying to achieve and it's going to be a wide variety of activities including very physical labor right the way through to technical, technical things and research and all of these other things and and we because we really want to make sure that the volunteers we do train actually have a true desire to share God's truth with the world rather than just having some addictive reason for volunteering. Does it make so, sense? so really to assess your desire, this is not about just helping out Jesus and Mary. This is if you feel you have a desire to share in the distribution of divine truth with the world. Mm. That's really uh, what we're about. And so if you want to volunteer to assist us in that, that's, that's how you would decide if you want to be a part of the program or not. Mm. Yeah. Okay, there's, besides that, there's the CLIP project that is still occurring. Um, so that's where old videos are clipped up into subject matter and placed as individual clips on the internet. And this way, we're finding this is very effective and a lot of people in their search functions find things that they couldn't find before as a result of these clips and that project at the moment there's very few people involved in these clips but but pretty much anyone with a computer anywhere in the world can do it um, and an internet connection but it does require following again a lot of specific directions and that's where we find most people who volunteer have to be have are not not suitable because they are unable to follow God's function principles they're unable to follow directions and follow a function for an outcome. Be very thorough. Yeah. Basically, when you're creating clips, you're creating data in a lot of different ways that we want to be able to utilise in our own search functions later on, in our own databases later on. And unless you're very thorough and specific, and specific. about how you log that data, even in the creation of the clip. So it's not just a video clip, you're describing it and logging times and all sorts of things. Unless you're willing to do all of that thoroughly, thoroughly and, and correctly, um, then there's no point in really making the clip because it's not utilizable except in a single way. And that doesn't meet the function principle, does it? Mm. No. Or the economy, right? Yeah. So another project is programming projects. Um, I've had a programmer join me at the moment, which is fantastic. <laughs> Hooray. And, uh, and Kate is uh, doing some of the jobs that I've had outstanding for quite a long time. And so over the next few months, we're actually finalising a subtitle project as a result of that. So that means that we'll be able to start subtitling every video, so every translated document that's ever produced now and every English document that's ever produced by the transcription team can be within two to three minutes turned into a subtitle for videos. <coughs> now, before it was, it was going to take 40 hours per language per talk, and now it's five minutes, so uh, less than five minutes. And so this means that we have the op opportunity over the next year to add subtitling for all different languages that, where people have done transcriptions to, to rapidly add subtitles to videos. And, and this means that all of the videos that ha will be English subtitled probably within a very short period of time. And, and then later, as the languages are transcribed uh, or translated by different people, that all of those languages will also be subtitled. And that only took a week or so of program, a couple of weeks of programming, but I just haven't had the time to do it. And uh, so I described the process to Kate, who's programming it, and she did it for me, and it's come up really nice. And uh, so this is great, great. These kind of projects mean that we have the ability now to output more things in, and actually finish up contacting more people about divine truth as a result of that. So that's... I'm very very happy that that's happened as you can imagine because I've had a lot of programming projects outstanding for a long time and I've been doing some of them very slowly and and this has the option to get a lot of those done much more quickly which will benefit everybody and in fact in the end we'll be able to create a database which is searchable on the website and also on the uh, offline website and this will enable you to find any, th any video on any subject on any matter and go straight to the point and even straight to the time in the video of where that thing is mentioned. And uh, this is where we're trying to head with it. Uh, so to, to make all of the 
the huge library that's now available, 1,800 more hours, there's more than 1,800 hours available at this stage, and, uh, and 10,000 documents or so. And you can imagine if we can have a way of searching it, then obviously people will be able to find the truth a lot better. So that's, uh, the programming projects have a lot of potential to, to reach a lot of people. And hence, uh, it's been something that I've been concerned about. In fact, I was actually thinking of start stopping our assistance groups for a year to complete the project programming projects at one point, because I can see how important they're going to be in the long run to distributing truth to the world. You know, this is also meaning then that the transcription team doesn't have to do as much work. They're already doing a lot of work. There's about 40 or so transcribers, and and these are all volunteers, and they're doing a lot of work, and. Um, and you know it means they don't have to do as much work as they had to do before because to convert to a transcribed document by hand to to subtitle took 40 hours per document per language so one talk might be in 20 languages if it's in 20 languages 40 hours per document per language is that means one talk one two hour talk would would take over 800 hours to get subtitles out of it. you imagine that that's a long time imagine trying to do that as a job what a what a waste of time right <laughs> at the end of the day so uh, it's great now that all that's been reduced there's other programming projects too which we'll hopefully start focusing on and we hope to accomplish a lot of those within the next year as well so so that means that we hope to get a lot of new functionality into the website searching wise and new functionality also in terms of what happens worldwide in terms of how I, when we're traveling, can interact and get everything up to date. Because that's part of my problem when I'm traveling is I don't, it's a lot harder to keep everything up to date than when we're home. So those are all projects that we're doing. There's the transcription, transliteration and translation project that's also still ongoing. Obviously every talk we produce Somebody has to get there and listen to every word, type it all out and convert that into a document. There's all sorts of experiments we've done trying to get software to do it, but in the end, none of it's really worked. So, you know, it, in the end, is a, a, some of you have been involved in that. We'd like to thank those people. Would you like to thank them too? Like, there's a lot of documents. Yeah. Now, one way we're trying to thank them is by giving them some money, at least, to cover their expenses. And so, um, more about uh, at the moment, uh, on the average, we receive about fourteen thousand dollars a month in donations, and eight thousand dollars of that of that money goes to people working on the transcription, transliteration, and translation projects, and people working on the programming projects and clips project. And volunteer education projects and uh, production and production. So, so video production like Lena and Igor. So, so of the fourteen thousand dollars we currently see per month, eight thousand dollars goes out to other people, and then six uh, four four thousand dollars goes to our expenses like website expenses, server expenses overseas, and uh, maintaining all those expenses, and and then two thousand dollars goes to Mary and myself. So that's how we've structured it at the moment. You can see that you can see that if we had more money coming in, we would have, be able to give to more of our volunteers, which would mean that they'd have more time available because most of them still have to work, you see. And some of them are very productive, but they're still working, and so they can't be as productive as they would be if they could have more funds coming from us. And so in the end, we're hoping to achieve that there's enough money flowing that some of the people can sort of live off that mostly and therefore spend most of their time working on these things. So, and, and this is something Lena and Eagle wanted to thank you too for their regular donations and we wanted to thank you for your regular donations because they have a big effect on what we can do actually. Mm -hmm. Just those regular monthly and sometimes small funds coming in that has a big effect on what we can do regularly. And so we'd like to thank those people and particularly people yeah. who are listening on the videos for those donations too. We really would. And I used to send a personal thank you to all of you. 
but now there's different methods and it's very hard for me to keep track of but I hope you feel our gratitude when we go to the bank statement and I see all your names there every month it's or in PayPal or wherever it is yeah. there's just we just feel so much gratitude to you guys for mm. for that love and effort that you've put into to doing that because Cause, cause we know that we can't do what we do without assistance we know that and in fact that's the law isn't it corporation is going to create something greater that's the law you see and so we know that actually we want to have this cooperative thing going on so that we can create something greater and uh, and these projects a lot a lot of them now we're trying so we, we are we, we've now got we have for a long period of time we had just enough funds to cover our expenses in terms of websites and all those things and and a couple of grand for ourselves to live on um, in terms of paying for our, because we we don't need yeah, we own our home and all that kind of stuff, so we, we don't we only need food really and clothes, and um, and you know car expenses and that's the basic expenses for us. So any extra funds that come in, we just try to put it in places that will help those people who are helping us already to be able to do that job more more of their time. You know that's where where we feel a lot of the money will need to go initially and the other side of it is we're yet to receive enough funds obviously to produce something like we have the property now because god's way has the property uh, of you know and so, so we have a property able to build a function center or some kind of center on but we don't have the funds to build that obviously um but if we did then that's probably where we'd be holding most of our events to be honest um and that would obviously mean in the long term savings of money as well and that we could then funnel to other projects. So, so you just think about it from a bit, bit of bigger picture than just you know giving a little few dollars here and there to Mary and Jesus and 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 that because that's not really what's happening here. There's there's more than that happening. There's a lot more people now getting involved in different projects and and as a result of that, those people, it depends on whether they have a sufficient amount of donations coming in. So we've actually created a volunteer page on our donations page. So you, if you go to our donation section of our website, there's a donation section. And then if you go to the pull down, there's a volunteers donation section. There's a, the there's a names of all the volunteers that are working quite like with a lot of their time towards the projects that we're, we're doing. And eventually we hope that there's, uh, in the end, uh, I think that part of the website would be thousands of people um, who you then offer the opportunity to appreciate them for their effort and time as well, directly, you know. And then if every one of them gets enough donations from anyone in the world, then we can use your donations to expressly get specific things, other projects done that we can start. Does that make sense? So don't think that even just a little tiny thing, donation doesn't help. It does. It, and and we, we will use them wisely and we'll always report how we're using them to you. And you'll always see them in the financial statements, so you, you know you'll know how they're going. But we just wanted to let you know about these projects. Some of you might like to be involved in some of them, right? But understand, there's going to be quite a strict induction process because it's no good us spending a lot of time uh, educating people only to have those people fly off the handle and leave or whatever. We we want to make sure that people are dedicated to the process you know dedicated to their, their relationship with god and and f and we want to feel that certainty that permanence you see the permanence principle we want to feel that permanence in people because unless we feel that permanence in people anything that get that we create at this stage will just get destroyed by somebody right we don't want it's that it's not so good economy not good economy yes so now you start <laughs> seeing how, how, how we make decisions. How we make decisions. It's all based on these principles. Yeah. If, and actually that's something you'll learn as you start to experiment with the principles, that all of your decisions become much simpler. You don't have to agonise over things. Once you feel the principles in your heart, the decisions are really easy. Is so, this in harmony with the principles, in, with my desire, in a, love base, in a loving way? Hmm. Yes or no? Right, yes or no. That's how you And it decide. can get right down to simple things like, do I plant this tree? Do I have to water this tree later? Yes. Then I shouldn't plant it because <laughs> it's out of harmony with economy. Right? Imagine if you plant 100 trees and you had to water 100 trees and you had to do that every week. Now a whole heap of time is spent in maintenance and no creation could take place. 
Right? So that's out of harmony with economy, out of harmony with function. So if I plant a tree, make sure you plant it and design the plant and design where it goes such a way that it waters itself. Then you don't have to bother watering it. Isn't that good? Then you can move on with the next creation while that creation just flourishes and move on with the next one. And this is the way we approach everything we do. We, not try, we don't do anything that we don't feel is necessary at the time. And uh, we often put off things that we don't feel we have the means or the energy or the time or any other of the resources to be able to make sure that thing survives. And if you think about it, the way that we produce divine truth is very much in harmony with that principle, isn't it? Yeah. Where we create videos, there's access, we don't have to keep repeating the same things and watering your inspiration. <laughs> and these groups are very much about that as well, yeah. giving you specific tools that you can carry on with. Yeah. yeah. All right, I think that are the we main things we needed things, to mention, wasn't it? Um, yep. I can't... Yes. Yes. Now, first, firstly, what we'd like to say to you is that this is your, your opportunity to express your appreciation of what we've done this week is in your feelings. You don't need to wait till afterwards and come up to me and say, thank you very much. I can feel who's appreciative and who is not. <laughs> right? So you don't need to do all of that to me. We, we can just get on with our group photo, our end of group photo, and then we can just clear out and I can feel which one of you will be appreciative and which ones may not. So, so we don't need to do all this hullabaloo that we get involved in doing, right? At and if you think about hugs, <laughs> if you exchange the emotion anyway, you don't need the physical representation of it either, do you? Yeah. We love so you, So we love right? you guys. We love you. Yeah. And we love how you've assisted us in this group because cause it, you, we have co-created 34 hours together by your attendance. You have enabled this co-creation of 34 hours of material which we are going to share with the world. You've enabled it and, and we feel our appreciation for your participation is just as big as your appreciation for our what we have supplied in the gift and and so we would like to remind you of that right instead of you thinking oh i've just sat here and just you know just sucked out the energy of life and that's not how it is <laughs> or, or many of you most of you in fact have participated in some way you've engaged this process this process of questioning and and this has enabled us to share a lot of really good material hasn't it Imagine if the world gets to hear this material. Yeah. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be fantastic? And you can sit back later on and go, even though I was embarrassed about that camera in my face, I'm so glad I was a part of that because look at what it's done. That's our opportunity of attendance, you see. Are you already glad that you came? Yeah. Yes. 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 That's good. Yeah, yeah. We're we're glad you did too, because otherwise yeah. we'd be sitting down talking at our <laughs> talking to each other, <laughs> talking to each other in our studio about these things, and everyone going, "I wish I was there. I could ask a question about this." And uh, so why it's didn't great. she ask him that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which of course we're still going to do, but but mm. in a much more relaxed fashion than producing it in the group like we have. Isn't it lovely? The rain Beautiful. has come. Yeah. Yeah. Cool down things a bit outside. So. So what, what we'd like to do is, uh, with the end of group photos, the same as last time for those of you here, basically what we'll be doing is stacking all of our chairs up in the corner over there in that area um, where Christy is standing at the moment, that area there. And now, we want them five high? F four high, four, I think, is about five. five high, yep. So over there, and that will clear out this place, but we want 20, I think it was 20, 12. 12 chairs or 13, 14 12. chairs on the front in a curve. Remember last time? And then we've got to move a few things and shift a few things around That's to get a photo. You. Assuming you want a photo. Yes. We just have got one question there. If we, yep. Name tags go up the back because we will use them again. Yep. It's amazing how many times somebody has the same name as you, right? Yep. And, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and next finish, group, you can finish up reusing a lot of those. Yeah. Sherry? Um, do our, just about the uh, bookings, do our bookings stand for the next 
groups that we've made already, even yes. though the yes. dates will change. Yes. Yes. So and if you have made bookings, even though we're going to shift the date, we'll give you. A, we'll give. Obviously, every time we shift a date, there's opportunity to cancel or or yes. rebook or whatever. Yes. But Thanks. but we will keep your bookings on the list as they currently are, and assume that that's. Oh, one thing we've got yeah, mentioned. Uh, waiting lists. Is that what you're going to say? No, no, not waiting lists. V more important than that. We don't have enough money to do the next groups, actually. Oh, yes. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, there, we have, we're, we're $6,000 short on the next group. And the following one after that, we're fully short. We're, each group now is costing us uh, around $31,000 uh, to actually run. That's in, including everything. And um, drives, backups, and yep. all these things. And uh, uh, it's not for both. No, it's individual. Is it? Oh, for two groups back That's to back, I mean. yeah. yeah. So two groups back to back. So each group with two groups back to back, so the whole month is 31 grand to run. Paying for the venue, paying for accommodation for just... And we're only paying for our accommodation in Lena and Eagles. We're so not yet not paying guys, for... Um, our camera operators. Our camera operators are actually paying for their own accommodation um, because we don't have enough funds to pay for that accommodation out of that, uh, out of that amount. So that's essentially a month's accommodation for each of them. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, that means that the next groups are not going to go ahead until we receive enough donations. But, but don't bother donating for them yet until the new financial year. In, in other words, sometime after June 2000, sometime after July 2017, 17. because there's, we're not going to be running any in the, this year, so there's no point donating. But just to remind you that that's the case, when we get enough, what we do is when we get enough funds to pay for the whole group, we book the venue and we give them the funds straight away. So that way it's all done and dusted, we've got it all paid for. And that's how we've been approaching every group. So that's just to let you know about that. And also there's now waiting lists for all the groups so that just to help with this whole issue of people cancelling and so on so that we capture your names. Um, so don't so we are going to allow the next bookings to go well and above, well above 70, um, yep. which is our normal limit. And if it turns out that it comes up to 140 a group, 150 a group, then we actually will find another venue. Um, or find at least, even if we stay here, find a venue. There is a venue down the road that has a big enough auditorium and we may finish up doing something like that as well. We're not sure. Just depends on how many people book. Does that make sense? Do you want to go to a question here? We've got a, we're getting... Yeah. It's all right. We need to answer your questions. Yeah. So. If I'd like to um, give some donations for the current assistance groups or assistance groups in the past where I haven't been able to raise the funds in time and attend it anyway. See the attitude though? It's a bad attitude, I understand, but I'd like to rectify it. No, no, I mean, I mean the attitude that you have right now is a bad attitude. What's... You're treating it as if you're paying for past things. They're already done. We've already paid for them. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So why are you worried? It's guilt driving, Jen, it's guilt driving the feeling. Just, just if you feel like you've got some funds to pay for future ones, then help us pay for them. You don't have to worry about past ones. I just didn't want to create problems with your book work, not knowing how to label that, that logistical No, stuff. well, according to, see, see, many of you don't know how to label anyway, because you're not in, <laughs> in you Hamity. You guys, sorry. You're not in Hamity with the Everyone permanent Everyone has a new take on how to label something. It's incredible. Do you, do you know how many how many rules I've had to make in my accounting to handle your donations? 280 so far. That's how many variations and on yet, DT Don exist. Not only DT Don, but a a -S 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 and DT and Don. I've only given you two rules and I've had 280 come in return. Two different... Uh, what does that tell you? How many of you like permanents? How many want lived by law? Hardly anybody. Who wants so to put their personal stamp on everything? 218 people at least. Whenever yeah. you're donating for an assistance group, that's it. All capitals, All no capitals, spaces. All capitals, no spaces, nothing. No thanks, no my name, no anything <laughs> afterwards. You understand? <laughs> Don't need anything else other than that. If you're donating to myself and Mary, it's or for, the, for Divine Truth. If you're donating just as a gift to myself and Mary,
I would love to get it so I can get rid of the 280 <laughs> rules and put it back to three. <laughs> That's what I would love. That would help so me immensely. So if you want to make a donation in appreciation before the next fi financial year, you can use one of those two codes. This one is a gift to myself and Mary specifically. In use. other words, that's saying you don't want it to be used for divine tree stuff. You want it to, you want us to use it, and we'll go out and buy a T-shirt with it or something like that. Right. <laughs> this one is saying I want you to use it for the expenses incurred in in websites and worldwide and volunteers and giving it to volunteers and other things. That's what that one says. And this one says I want you to put it to an assistance group. Now, if you want it to an assistance group in EU, the European Union, it's just EU on the end. If you want it to an assistance group with US or North, North America, America, it's NA on the end. And if you want it for an assistance group in Australia, it's just AU on the end. Does that make sense? That's it. Anything that doesn't have a suffix, we treat to be towards a any assistance group. Yeah, all any, but it yeah. Ends up First AU. Australian because that's where we're running most of them. But potentially we could be running some of these overseas, couldn't we? But obviously the expenses of doing it is much higher than the expenses here. Yeah. So does that help in terms of donations? That that would help us greatly. So if you currently have stuff going on or regular donations, which some of you I noticed you have from bank accounts and stuff, that would help us a lot if you could do those things because I can get rid of all of these things where I've got to, every month I've got to go through and see what new thing has happened with each person and type all that in and it just adds to the workload of all the other things that are happening at the time, does that make sense? <laughs> when you really understand permanence, I'll see only that. Because <laughs> it is written very specifically on the website. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, all right, so are we ready to go? Thank you, everyone, and uh, farewell. Thanks, we love you. And let's have our... Um, let's have our photos. Yeah.